Hi, it's Brandon from Arabian Night Armory, and today we're going to be talking about the real lesson of the Predator film that came out recently, which is Prey. Uh, so, in this movie, uh, we see a Predator who is intentionally not using plasma weaponry. Now, depending on if you go by the comics timeline or the Aliens vs. Predator timeline, either way, he has access to this kind of technology, but he's not using it on purpose because it's challenging. But there's another decision he makes in that same vein that ends up being what kills him. So, something that distinguishes this predator from every other predator that you've seen in movies before is that this one is using almost no armor. Now, normally with a predator you'll see a breastplate. Sometimes it's a full breastplate for the upper half, sometimes it's only one side. Um, you'll see pauldrons, you'll see uh, greaves, which are the shin armor, you'll see sabatons, which are foot armor. Uh, this predator has none of those. The only thing that this Predator is wearing is a helmet, the van braces, which some people call gauntlets. They don't have any plating on the hands, so that, that means they're not gauntlets, they're just van braces. Uh, and the plated tassets and loincloth. So he's practically going into battle naked. And what you'll notice over the course of this film is that this Predator gets more and more injured, fighting more people and more animals. And most of these injuries would have been prevented if he just chose to wear more armor. One thing that happens is he steps in a bear trap, and the bear trap clamps down on his leg. And he's strong enough to just um, take that hit, and he has this, this tool. It's kind of like a little whip blade, it's about this long, and he whips it onto the, the bear trap and pulls it out, and that breaks the bear trap open. Well, that injury wouldn't have happened if he had greaves. Uh, at another point, when he's fighting uh, the Native Americans, the Comanche, he gets shot with a few arrows, and he gets shot right around where the bicep would meet the uh, shoulder. That would have been stopped by a pauldron. He also gets stabbed, impaled actually, with one of his own uh, combi stick spears, and it's through the chest. And again, that would have been prevented if he's wearing a breastplate. Um, he also gets cut a few times with uh, some tomahawks and some uh, fighting knives. Uh, he gets shot a few times with flintlocks. Most of the hits from the flintlocks aren't very effective for two reasons. One is he gets shot in the helmet and it literally just bounces off, which illustrates my point. Good armor would have prevented him from dying. The second time, he uses a shield that unfolds from his vampires, which is really cool. I'm glad I got to see that in, in this movie because like, I would love to see, like, if you haven't seen the movie, it's like a little triangle that kind of unfolds into a circle. So. Tactically, having a buckler is really, really good for close quarters combat. Uh, and it makes sense with the way the predators fight, because a buckler, a small shield, it doesn't cover his whole body like a tower shield. It requires more dynamic blocking to be effective. And it can be used as a weapon, which he does use it as a weapon. Uh, this predator also sustained a couple injuries from entering a wrestling match with a grizzly bear. He ends up winning the match, obviously. Um, I love that the killing blow was that he does a sidekick to the, the bear's uh, head and that breaks the neck and then you know he picks up the bear over his head and the blood drips all over him and he's like in the glory of that moment uh, and in that moment he sees the protagonist uh, Na uh, Naru, Naru in a beaver dam that was hiding from the bear and he ignores her because he doesn't consider her a threat he considers the bear to be the threat between the two of them and that mentality ends up being another reason why he's defeated um, later on, the main character, when they're having this final confrontation with the Predator, they're kind of combining all of the knowledge that they've gained, not just from hunting creatures in general, but from the way that this Predator behaves, the way it, it moves, the way it fights, the way it chooses to take an engagement, and it makes it a very believable ending. Uh, so we're going to get into the spoilers for the ending, obviously, but that's kind of necessary for the point of this, this video. So when she's fighting the predator in the final confrontation, she takes this medicine that slows down her blood circulation, but it also makes her body run colder so she's invisible to the predator. And then she takes a flintlock she got from one of the French fur trappers and she shoots him in the back of the head and the helmet falls off the predator's face. So that's the first sneak attack she gets. Later on, she gets another sneak attack as she's being pursued she jumps out of the trees, takes out her tomahawk, and gets a couple extra shots uh, on the shoulders and upper chest of the predator. And right there is more injuries that would have been prevented by armor. Uh, she ends up 
of drawing him out a little bit further into a series of traps that she made. Uh, the first trap was uh, spike traps that she put along the trees because she noticed the predator loves to jump from tree to tree and that's how it hunts its prey. Uh, so the predator, not really paying attention to its surroundings, just took for granted that these trees are fine and then he ends up getting cut up on his legs by the spike traps. Again, griefs would have prevented that. Sabaton's foot armor, that also would have prevented some of that injury. Uh, she also ends up leading him into a, like a, a bog or a mud hole, and it's got moss on it. So you wouldn't tell, you would not be able to notice from just looking at this, this mud hole that it's a hole that you could sink into because the moss looks just the same as the moss that's on the ground around it. So the predator ends up getting in there, and he sinks in all the way. Oh, there was another trap before that, actually. Right, so before he sinks into the mud hole, the other trap that she does is she baits him into stabbing a tree with his wrist blades, and then he gets stuck. And then she takes one of his uh, combi sticks, which is a spear on one side and a mace on the other side, and she goes to stab him in the head. And he's not wearing a helmet, so that could kill him. So he takes out his shield, and when he deploys his shield, that shield cuts off his other arm. So it, at this point in the fight, he has been shot in the back of the head with a flintlock. He cut off his own arm, blocking a spear that was aimed at his brain from uh, the main character, Daru. Um, he's been stabbed through the foot. He's been impaled through the chest. He's been stabbed with, uh, uh, through the chest impaled was with his own combi stick spear through the foot too. Uh, he's been cut up by knives. He's been cut up by tomahawks. Uh, the flintlocks weren't really effective because he was blocking with a shield. But the point is, like, he's very injured over the whole course of this movie, just over and over and over. And when he gets trapped in the mud, he's like, all right, I've had enough of this, this pesky human. So he takes out his spear gun, and he aims it at her, and he shoots it. And that's when the hero moves over and reveals that when he lost his helmet, she picked up the helmet, set it up on a trap, so that the laser dots were aiming at his head, and then he turns around and he sees that the spears that he was just shooting are arcing in a circle to follow the target, and he headshots himself. And that's a very believable way to kill the predator because she doesn't she doesn't win a boxing match with the thing, right? She observes the way he hunts and uses it against him. She observes the performance of his own weapons. Not just the, the spear gun going off of the helmet, but also the combi stick, which breaks into a spear uh, and mace combo. She uses those weapons against him. She knows that the predator thrills in hunting things, and that's what she makes it into, a hunt. A hunt where she has traps all over the place. So, I love the, the movie. I love the ending. This is probably one of the best predator movies I've ever seen. I would honestly put it about tied with the original movie, like it's way better than a lot of the other sequels that have come out. Um, but yeah, it's it's believable because of that core choice that ended up being the Predator's downfall. He chose to challenge himself by not bringing a lot of armor. He's practically naked. You know, that the injury to the chest would have been prevented, her tomahawk swings to the shoulders would have been prevented, it's getting stabbed through the foot, getting cut in the thighs, all of that would have been stopped if he wore, like, the kind of armor that the Darkblade clan wore in, like, Predator Concrete Jungle, or the amount of armor that the Celtic wore in Alien vs. Predators. Um, but yeah, I, I highly recommend this movie. I would love to see a sequel to Prey. Um, and that's all I have to say. Hope you had a good one.